grab your big book, your pen, your highlighter, and notepad and get ready to hear and apply some of the solution from the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous through the experience, strength, and hope of Nikki M. To have a question addressed in a future episode of Noodle It Out with Nikki, please send an email to noodlewithnikki at gmail.com and Nikki is spelled with two Ks. To get a more interactive experience with Nikki as she noodles out life and recovery questions using the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous, you can get a link to her weekly Noodle It Out with Nikki meeting held live on Zoom every Monday morning at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. The information to that meeting is in the show notes of this podcast. God morning, God afternoon, and God evening to all. My name is Justin B, and I am a son of an all-powerful and all-loving God and a qualifying addict of multiple fellowships, living in the miracle of recovery, and I'm here with the intelligent agent, spearhead of God's ever-advancing creation, and my co-host, Nikki M. Nikki, talk. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Nikki M, and according to my big book, I'm an intelligent agent spearhead of God's ever advancing creation. And I agree with that. I mean, I've been here over a decade. So finally I'm seeing the truth. It took a while for me to be reprogrammed into believing this because I came in here, Justin, thinking I'm no good. Poor me driven by those 400 forms of madness. And so I am an intelligent agent spearhead, not just because the book says that I believe it and I know it. And I'm just really great. I went to a convention. If anybody's out there listening into uh, internet land and you're on zoom meetings, there's also a real recovery world in person. Go to a local AA convention. This one was a cocaine anonymous, which takes all addicts of any sort. Sometimes it's hard to find a codependence convention. So just jump on to an Al-Anon or an AA. Any of the 12 steps will take anybody because if they are in the big book, Justin, it says that anybody suffering the disease of alcoholism, ism without picking up a drink, is welcome here. So I'm just, I'm still reeling in from that, that energy, you know, it's just that energy of a fellowship and, you know, that excitement of the miracle when we all get reborn together. Thank you for sharing that, that, Nikki. One of the things that I've come to realize more and more and come to believe more and more, um, even though I'm one who has never really even gotten drunk, you know, in my life, I recognize and embrace that I suffer from the disease of alcoholism and I feel I can more easily identify in those groups and not feel like an imposter because the ism is there and, and, uh, what a, that actually brings peace to my life rather than, um, like imposter syndrome feelings. All right. So real quick. I'm the steward of the RICO 12 family of recovery resources. We've got other podcasts out there that you can go check out. You can go check out the website, RICO12.com. Um, and this exercise here with Nikki is called Noodle It Out with Nikki M. And it is an exercise and deep dive into finding solutions to questions, issues, and things we encounter in everyday life in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm going to bring a question or two from my own life, from the lives of others that I'm observing in recovery, or from questions that you, the listening audience, email to us at noodlewithnikki at gmail.com. And, and we'll bring those to Nikki and we'll dive into the, the big book and see what does the book say. And, and so get ready, get your big book out, get ready to run around and take some notes and highlight and do everything else we've got here. So Nikki, I've got a question for you today that uh, actually came from your a uh, noodle meeting this morning that you have your live noodle meeting that you have every Monday morning at, I believe it's nine o'clock AM Eastern time. And if anybody out there wants to join in on that, I'll put the link to that meeting in the show notes of the podcast. But this question was one that as I listened, I went, wow, that's one that I can really identify with. And I've talked to a lot of people that do. And here it is. I have serious doubts and hesitations about the concept of God, and yet this program is all about increasing and developing a spiritual way of life. How do I grow and develop my spiritual way of life on the foundation that I'm on? Okay, yes, I remember this question and the earth angel who asked it. And the first thing, you know, you know, we were on the meeting, Justin, it said, number one, have you worked your 12 steps? And she had worked her 12 steps. You know, this person had worked their 12 steps. Are you sponsoring? Because it is a 12-step program. So yes, this person is sponsoring. 
<clears throat> how long have you been here? Excuse me. I've always got a frog in my throat Monday mornings from a weekend of celebrating God. So <clears throat> are you sponsoring? Yes, yeah, she's sponsoring. Then it says, I went to here. Of course, page 87. Let's just all roll there in our big books. We use the fourth edition of the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. I usually replace drinking for thinking because the book says it centers in our mind. Page 87. Be quick to see where religious people are right. Now, remember, by this time we've worked, we're on page 87 of the big book. We have, we're powerless. We know there's no other world for us. You know, we know that this is also not an overnight matter. You know, it must can, how do I grow and develop it? How long have you been here, new friend? Oh, you've only been here a year. <laughs> you understand, Justin. I mean, in year four, I wanted to die in the rooms. In the rooms, I wanted to die in year four. So you've only been here a year and, you, and she's right on target. You, you want to develop and grow this relationship. Step 11. We, and she said also, I remember this key thing, besides prayer and meditation, because <clears throat> she has been praying and meditating. So what are you doing besides prayer and meditation? Well, are you seeing where religious people are right? Because I'm not going into that church. You know, I hate God. I'm not having any part of it. Well, are you going to the Buddhist temple? Are you going to see where your yogini friends are you going to see where spiritual people are right? Oh, what about that sound bath that your hippie neighbor told you about, you know, where they lay in the grass and they listen to sound bowls? Did you try some of these things, group activities? Because we find God deep down inside every man, woman, and child. Page 55 is a fundamental idea of God. So are you doing these things? And, you know, I have a note here, fellowship. Because you need a substitute, and it's vastly more than that, whatever your addiction is. Are you having a substitute to find and seek God? Yes, there's a substitute, it says on page 152, in the fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. So you're sponsoring, and now you're seeking this God. Are you asking your fellows? You know, you got to get a God squad. Your sponsor's not always there for you. You see that spiritual, who you think is a giant in the room? probably not a spiritual giant. That's your, you know, we assign magical, mystical qualities to people. So he's just an addict. Someone suffering the disease of alcohol, like you and me go up and ask him, make the approach. Remember you tapped a source of power person, ask that person who lo you love their shares. You see them sponsoring. How do you see God? You know, ask your, ask that family friend who, you know, is in something and has what you want. Aunt Betty. Christmas is coming up, Thanksgiving in America. Ask. You know, that person you don't speak that you used to that. Hi, I used to judge that cousin. You understand? Because I, I don't need God. You, you and your, your weirdness get away from me. And now it's like, so I see where religious people are right. I, I went and volunteered. Are you volunteering? I volunteered at my Salvation Army during COVID. Justin, it was the only building that would let me in. Even hospitals banned me because I did not follow the, the mandates. And, you know, I talk about that a lot because it was literally the greatest time of my life. In it, I didn't realize it. But exactly what the book says, my dark past is my greatest asset. So I got to volunteer and I got to see God come alive when everybody in that building, they were not allowed to have unvaccinated people in there. And my pastor and his, and, and, and his wife, they're both pastors of the Salvation Army, they allowed me to come in. Now they did get permission. I mean, they went through all this rigmarole because Everyone has a seat at God's table. So then that really, I really saw these people are walking the walk, not just talking the talk. And then I got into in line and I saw, oh, I've got a lot of Jewish people in my fellowship. Let me see where they're right. right. Let me go deeper. How about this? Because I'm sharing in, in between giving, giving page numbers of page 87, I'm sharing my experience, strength, and hope of what I've done. How about the history of AA when I first came in? I learned the history of everybody, the Oxford group. <laughs> Learn the history of AA. Learn, that's a great way to see where religious people are, right? The history of the 12 steps, which were once six steps, you know, and, and how does that work? And what was the Oxford group looking into? And what were the Washingtonians doing? And I did that for many years too, you know? And so there's... um. The other way is there's some spiritual, they, they are giants in the rooms. I mean, you got to say it. It's like Mark Houston, the Bob D's, the Chris Ramers of the room that I love from, 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 from speaker tapes before we had Zoom and all this stuff, Justin. It's like, there's some tapes on 
step 10, 11, and 12 that these people give out. Like, and, and Mark Houston's famous line, are you going to go to God with a thimble or are you going to go with like, you know, a dump truck and fill it up? A thimble of water? Or are you going to get a truckload of this stuff and every day? Sometimes you may have to go to see where religious people are, right? You can seek a retreat. I know a lot of people who do silent retreats. We have these different groups here, uh, Manresa, and it's a, it's a, you know, Jesuits, and they go and they offer silent retreats. There's so much out there that you can do, and it's on page 80, on page 87. Another thing says here, here's a promise of this on page 132, because I, I like to have the big book between us as we talk, Justin. See, if you see where religious people are right, top of page 132, and if our friend who's asking how do I grow and develop, if you do not argue about religion, here's your promise, you will make new friends and you are sure to find new avenues of usefulness and pleasure. You know, it's it's awesome. Last night after uh, I had such a great day of fellowship and one of the guys in fellowship, we was turning 65. So they had this thing. I show up there. My pastor is there. You know, it's like, Pastor Doug, you're here. You and you came to Charlie's birthday party because where we, our church has been the only church that holds 12-step meetings during the pandemic. Now everything's opened back up, but I mean, this is just like crazy. <laughs> and then it says, you people out there, it says, you will be a bright spot in such a congregation how about in such a temple? You know, oh, I also told the, the person who asked our fellow, Justin, I said, you know, Muslims, Muslims pray five times a day. Do you need to go to a mosque? Do you need to get your hijab on? No, you don't. Do you need to find a place quiet in the office five times a day? Set a timer and think and talk to your God. You know, Justin, you and I were just talking about some simple prayers. Thank you, God. That's a simple prayer. And how about this one? You could go in if you're praying five times a day, like our brothers and sisters that are Muslim do. You don't need a mat. You don't need to do any rituals. You can just go and say, use me, God. What would you have me be at the office, God? Because we practice these principles in all our affairs. We're not just coming into 12 step to see what we can take. This is a lifestyle, everybody. So you're seeking. She. Oh, this is another word I think that she used. Um, I'm dabbling. Where do We don't dabble. That's what I said. We don't dabble. We, hey, page 14, everybody, a price must be paid. And if you pay that price, back to page 132, it says you're a bright spot. You'll bring new hope, new courage. My, my pastor cannot bring, he's like, we do this part in, in where we welcome new friends. He's like, Nikki, do you, you, you didn't bring a new friend this week. You're, you're, you're not doing well. I'm like, I, I got to, Hey, don't worry, pastor Doug. I got one coming next week because it's like bringing new people home. And, and right now, oddly enough, you know what our pastor has done. And this is the miracle, a 12 week series on the 12 steps. So it was step five. He's taken step five. And I have my little thing with all my notes. We admitted to God ourselves into another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. What does he put on that with that step? Psalm 51. Psalm 51. And I won't read it now. Everyone can look into it, but confess your sins. Cleanse me. Clean me, God. You know, I mean, this is what the what this murderer David is saying. So if this murderer David can get reborn, you know what, people? Anyone can. Uh, thank you for walking through that, Nikki. There's so much in there. And I I want to push back just a little bit on on this. You know, maybe this person or maybe a person who brings a similar thing up has experienced a lot of uh, issues in the past. Trauma, they may say, use that word, with um, religious situations and maybe just totally turned off by it. What, I mean, you've said, hey, try something different. But how does that person divorce their previous experience with religion with their future or hopefully current experience with God? How does that divorce happen? Okay, that's a great question because that was part of another thing, you know, it kind of rolls into so much on Noodle that we discussed at our live meeting today. And it's really here, page 12. Page 12, everybody. Okay, just roll there. It says, our friend said, why don't you 
That's to the new person. I hate God, you know, with just what you just said. They're all apprehensive. Why don't you choose your own conception of God? That's all we're asking you to do. Forget religion. We're talking spirituality here. Forget religion. You could, Everybody's welcome here. It doesn't matter. Sikhs, Hindus, we don't care. New age, I don't care. Everyone's welcome. Roll your book to page 568. People, if you're walking and we're in your ears and you're on a hike, just make a mental note, page 568. And it says here, we find, that's big book people. That's me and Justin. That's people who've come before us. Find that no one, and I wrote my name in there, including Nikki M, need have difficulty with the spirituality of the program. Okay, this is a program. We're being reprogrammed. Willingness. Are you willing? Can you get honest? Your life is not working. You're here trying to get willing to find a new way and open-minded. You have to be open-minded because you're gonna. we're going to talk about the most loving, powerful creator of the universe. You got to get real open-minded here. They're essential to the recovery, to the essential of recovery. But these are indispensable. See, you're going to have to remind your sponsee, this is a real inside job to the person who's apprehensive. You cannot go to the pot shop or to the pharmacy and get dispensed willingness, honesty, or open-mindedness. This is deep down inside of you. Because I think it's on, oh, I know it's on step two that we talk about, but it says here, um, I think it's on page 55. It says, we can only clear the ground a bit. So if my testimony to you, new friend, helps you, number one, sweep away prejudice. See, I need you to sweep away all your prejudice. I need you to think honestly. Your life isn't working. None of the concepts, nothing you think is working for you. You just said you wanted to kill yourself. Seriously, like you got to think about this. Think honestly. And I want you to search diligently. Here's a key word, within yourself. Then you can join us on a broad highway. This is a broad highway. Your own conception of God. Here comes the big book dance. We went to page 12. Your own conception. Page 55. Can you sweep away? Sweep away all your prejudice, anything you've ever learned. Can you think honestly? Nothing has worked for you. You're beyond human aid, right? I mean, this is, this is crazy. And then it says, you know, search diligently within yourself. Stop looking for it in the bottle. In, oh, in, in, in other places, you've looked for it in when you went to your kibbutz. It didn't work. You went all the way to your kibbutz. It didn't work. So this is within yourself. Wherever you go, there you are. Or wherever I go, there I am. Whatever, however they say that. So, And then let's go right back to page 568, as we talked about earlier, as I'm doing the dance here. Because here it is. I love this. There is a principle which is bar against all information, which is proof against all arguments and which cannot fail to keep a person, a man, a woman, a person in everlasting ignorance. That principle is contempt prior to investigation. Have you really investigated this way of life? Have you really investigated this conception that we talk about in a 12-step program? I mean, this is different from your religion. This is, comp this is I like to say where all the weirdos go. Because see, I had contempt prior to, I had to take my mind deep. Nikki, you had contempt prior to investigation. You thought, how can a mother be a stripper? What kind of person does? Then God put a six-inch stiletto on my foot for eight years, Justin, single mom. And I knew contempt prior to investigation. This is when I would watch Sally Jesse Raphael. You know, I'd watch on the couch when I was home, ditching school. Oh, look at those girls. I, I'm not going to be like that. God put the shoe on me. Single mother, 19. Nikki, you want to make some money? Six inch stiletto. How can they be? Yeah, they can. They can be good moms. They can be bad. They can do. You can be a mom and be a dancer. You see what I mean? How can how can I get better in this program? Contempt prior to investigation. Put the shoe on. Put the twelve step shoe on. Walk a mile on this broad highway. Sweep away your prejudice. Get open minded, honest, and willing. So come back at me. Give me some pushback. No, I I, I love that, and I think that. Well, our past is, can become our greatest asset and God, the all power, you know, my all powerful, all knowing, all loving God has a plan for me, you know, and if that means in your case, you know, putting on six inch pair of stilettos and 
and and and dancing for a while to so that you can become what God wants you to become. That's what it is. And I've I've walked uh, paths that you know I thought there is no way that any God could ever love a person like me because of these stupid choices and stupid things that I've done, um, whether by choice or by well, they're they're always by choice, but. I could lose my agency to make those choices by actions that I take. And, uh, and yet now, as I look back at my life, I have no, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I am now grateful for those experiences. And I move forward striving to lift and help others with that. So I don't know that I had any pushback. I just wanted to reiterate that. Now, any, any, any additional thoughts, Nikki? Yeah, that was what my pastor <clears throat> discussed sorry, you guys, I keep getting this frog right up in here, which is step five. And we talked about the beginning of this podcast was, you know, how can I grow and improve my, you know, spiritual contact? And, and we talked about learning the history of AA and the Oxford group, which was a Christian group. And a lot of the big book comes from the book of James. And in the book of James here, I'm going to quote this because this is what my pastor, you know, on it. he's a teacher. He passes out all this stuff. I mean, with the 12 steps, he wrote out, Therefore, confess your sins to each other. And then, Justin, see, you and I just did a fifth step here. You did awful things. I did awful things. We're selfish, self-seeking. We don't care the details. Confess your sins to each other. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. That's what we do with each other. That's James 5, verse 16. That's what we do in a step five. This is not a new concept. Bunch of people 2,000 years ago wearing sheepskin were confessing their sins to each other, step five, praying for each other so that we could be healed. 12-step isn't a new concept. This concept of God isn't new. It's just 12-step, it's real radical. And that's why it's perfect for me. I, I am not, hey, warning, Justin, everybody, you're stuck with me. I'm not leaving. I have found my home. I have found my people and I have found page 77, Justin, my purpose. Why don't you read it? Why don't you read what my purpose is, Justin, and read it over yourself? Because I found that here in the 12 steps. I could not find that in my, I still can't find that just in my church because, you know, there's only one way or this and that, but I found that here, 12 step. Yeah, this is my real purpose. My real purpose is to fit myself to be of maximum service to God and to the people about me. That's my real purpose. And I agree with that. And I love that, that, uh, uh, verse from James that you brought up everybody. I'm, I'm going to close this out with this invitation. Pray one for another that we may be healed. There's one who has all power. That one is God. May you find God now. <laughs>